Welcome to the Prospered Soul Podcast. I am your host, Lana McMurray, and I thank you for following me along on my self-awareness journey in starting up this podcast, 30-day daily podcast following inspired action, later to be a more conceptual podcast designed based on function of business and inspiration. But in the beginning, just opening up my mouth and talking like I have felt impressed to do for the past three years. Yesterday was not a great day, but it was a good day. Every day is always a good day. I want to encourage you out there because I don't suffer from any um, illness like mental illness. I don't have bipolar. I don't have depression or anxiety. Thank God because I have dealt with and had to overcome too much in my life for others being the quarterback that me, I have children that have experience that I've been on the inside of it I've been with lots of psychiatrists psychologists group studies lots and lots of things so I deeply respect and understand and feel for anyone who is experiencing any mental illness and let me tell you mental illness from I was in the NAMI parent to parent um, class for 14 weeks led by a professional of the National Association of Mental Illness understanding what true mental illness is because someone who does not have that everybody doesn't have it mental illness isn't a weakness It's not a deficiency. It's not something that you need to wish you don't have, you need to try to get rid of, wake up and have a better day. It is a a significant biological condition that needs to be respected. It's not a devil or a demon. It's not an oppression. To be honest, medical doctors don't necessarily know what it is, but it exists. One of my favorite soap opera actors killed himself this week. He played Jason on General Hospital. And he played Billy on The Young and the Restless. And he's in my phone. Him and his prior girlfriend as relationship goals. That I look at as relationship goals. He had what his mother came out to say was bipolar and he ended his own life that's just not somebody having a bad day that's a condition and what I learned through my sessions with the National Association of Mental Illness and through all of that workbook and training that they poured into us is that mental illness is a condition likened to heart disease. My mom died of heart disease. My sister died of heart disease. They weren't play playing their condition and their symptoms. When they didn't feel good, they didn't feel good. It killed them. This took Robin Williams. He had other things going on, but he had some mental illness as well. That guy that danced, I never did really watch him on the Ellen show, same thing. And this is stuff that comes up by surprise. So trust me, yes, I'm always thinking about, you know, are my children okay? And I do not want to be a cause to make them suffer anymore. That's why I took these classes. And a true narcissist has no empathy. We throw around that label a lot that people you're a narcissist and that's not true you can have bad behavior but it doesn't make you a narcissist a narcissist lacks empathy they cannot care for you as much as you may want them to and shake them and try to explain to them they won't understand they 
they won't even want to understand. But if someone has said, I am sorry, I did this and I did that, you're right. I was wrong, you're right. I, I was wrong. And they really mean it. And they do it more than five times, not just once. Try to get a narcissist to apologize to you. You're lucky if you get one apology and it's going to incorporate you in there somehow. I am talking about when you give them a chance to talk and you get your chance to talk. They don't see, it's never just me. It's never just them. It's always, well, I did it because, you know. But when someone says, I take the blame. I take full responsibility. That was, that was bad on my part. I'm wrong. That's not a narcissist. Now, getting back to mental illness, respect that medicine doesn't even like work as well as it should there and one thing that we discovered was we wish that they knew that there was a test they could run on an individual to diagnose them and ascribe them the medication they need they don't even have that down yet so it's like first of all you got to get into the psychiatrist office which is book full If you ever go into a psychiatrist's office with your loved one or with yourself, those office um, buildings are, unless they're like really private, but they're so busy that they're not going to like have it secretly like they did with Harbor House when I went in for domestic abuse and to start my counseling because of the domestic abuse I was going through in my marital relationship. Um, They don't have that privacy like that. All of the psychiatry offices I have been in, and yes, this illness, I do say, came about, well, first of all, I think my husband suffered from depression and bipolar, so uh, organically he could have passed it down. But then his behavior in the relationship didn't help at all, and then my Christian full falling on my face loving the Lord and trying to love this our, our, and walk in faith and love and giving him full reign to act a full crazy person well not a full crazy person but I'm saying he did not get checked as much as he should have did not help our situation at all but if you have Um, a loved one that is having to undergo psychiatric treatment for bipolar mood disorders sadness depression so forth so forth respect that as a real organic um, issue like having a cancer having covid having a heart disease it is truly something that has to be examined and maintained. It's not something that you tell them to wake up and if you think that you feed them a good breakfast and if they can do things that are fun and they can just have happiness, it'll go away. It, this is where it's going to take spirituality. God can heal it. Universe can heal it. I absolutely believe that. But it's going to take some time. It will take, it's going to take effort. I absolutely believe in healing. I do not believe that there is a God, and I say God, and I'm probably going to always say that because I was raised as a Baptist Christian, and I have been come up in the church all my life, and I am very comfortable with knowing the creator of this universe and of ourselves as God. I understand others think of it as spirit or universe. You can call him what he, whatever, because he's big enough. He doesn't have an ego where he's bothered by the name that you give him. But when I say God, it means what you feel about him, okay? Yes, this can be healed. Yes, by going within and doing certain things using the law of assumption revision through the law of assumption 
the law of attraction by watching your frequency and your 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 energy by prayer by using the word and through your consciousness you can change and you can help another person change so do not ever say my whatever don't claim that as I am because I am is your awareness of being it is the, the feeling of I am think about it like this look at your toes look at your down at your feet look at your arm who is doing that Who, who's looking down at your arm or your toe or your shoes on your foot or your arm what you say is I am that's right that a uh, observant part of you the part of you that is observing is the spiritual aspect of you that is I am you really really are I am so whenever you say I am this I am that you are making a commandment you're speaking that into existence you're creating it is a constant force within you that always works one thing about God is he doesn't say oh she didn't mean that I'm not gonna make that come to pass you're gonna manifest the good and the bad so your I am is your awareness of being it is what creates your reality and if you're struggling with something and you don't like it it means that you don't have to keep it you've got the power to change it at the very center of your consciousness and I started this actually podcast talking about consciousness and that's the direction I'm going to go with this podcast as I said it's a hybrid of spiritual and business I will delve into tactics and techniques and step by steps for business because I love business I'm a born entrepreneur but the concept of yourself your self concept your self love there's you're not gonna achieve anything if you do not have your inner world right you will sabotage yourself you will ruin it you have got to have your consciousness intact and that starts with I am okay that is the your identity and I do on my uh, and on my Instagram page or I don't know if I have it up again I may put it up with this post here I have offered to teach you how to shift shift your identity for free for right now a lot of the things I'm doing for free do understand people have gifts and talents and when they offer you something take a hold of it because one day you're gonna have to pay for that stuff so your identity is what controls things your identity is where you look from it's your being your state of being that's the first law that God had was being so your state drives your conditions everything stems from that that is the cause substance I am within you is the cause substance and your consciousness is the only reality that exists really when it comes down to it we are all in this world with individual realities we're we're we're, we're fragments of God himself expressing himself through us being with us we're never alone I am is with us all the time when you are observing and you're the one that's looking out that's God within you with you and that power when you put your attention on something that's the that's why they say where you put your attention where energy is, is you know that's gonna grow even if you don't mean to so you have to be responsible and careful and this is where blame is like bullcrap okay you can't blame anybody for anything once you become aware past uh, once you become conscious you're responsible okay you can change things from a very young age especially when you get to be in your 30s and 40s stop blaming other people 
for what's happening in your life or what's happening in your life. You're well aware now. So your consciousness is the only reality and it's the cause substance of everything in your life. And all your experiences are reflections of your consciousness. And your mind is arranged according to your beliefs and what you've consented to be truth for you. So everything, what you believe, how you look, how beautiful are you? Whether you think you're smart enough for something, will you go for that promotion? Whether you, how much money is in your freaking pocket and in your bank account? Everything. And I have decided for myself, I'm not letting anybody else tell me what I am and decide for me what I can have. If you love me, then we will work. I will work it out with anyone. I will, I will understand. I will forgive. I will be giving. I will be there. But if you're just going to trash me and misunderstand me, not have my back, blame me, then you can be on your own and you can take care of yourself. And this should be for everyone. You deserve to be treated with respect, especially when you're not doing anybody else any harm. If you're not intentionally going out to ruin someone else's life, you're just trying to do the best you can and you're willing to see things differently. You're willing to take somebody else's opinion. You're willing to change your mind. You can just be the best you can have some compassion on yourself forgive yourself and keep it pushing all right well that's what i felt needed to come out of me today this has felt really good talking to you today i am available um, i have one-on-one -on -one sessions available i am a really good coach and I'm not begging, I'm just saying, you know, I am a really good coach. I am a book solid, really good coach. And if you would like to work with me, my information is in the description. I got it all organized there for you. Have a wonderful time in your life. Remember, there is hope. There's answers. It's not the end. It's never the end. We're going to talk more about revision and um, how revision allows you to redo your life, to make changes to things that you thought you could never change. You can change the past. Don't let nobody tell you, oh, the past is done. That's daggum lie. Okay? You can revise it. It's a manifestation technique. It allows you to go back in time and change and reimagine it and make your life different. Because you know what? There is more than one plane of reality here. Don't stay stuck on this one right here where you're trying to fix this one situation. Rise up. Go into a different alternative reality. Accept that one and demand other people come up with you. It's true and it works. All right. Thanks for listening.